Good morning, good morning, good morning. What a wonderful moment. What a wonderful day. What a wonderful season that we are in. We're in the season, the era of Holy Spirit. And I'm so excited to be your tour guide <laughs> as we navigate through this season of a mighty, mighty Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. Come on in. Come on in. Good morning, Camilla. Good, good morning, show me. In the spirit. Ooh, that's my favorite. Let's get our IG families in. There are rivers. Yes, streams of life. Yes, yes. Now gushing forth. <laughs> oh, don't you want it? Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, do you know you need it? <laughs> That's it right there. Do you know you need it? Don't you want it? I do, I do, I do. Teach us, teach us to enter in. Come on in, come on in. Come on in. There is a flow. Thank God for Bishop Jackson this morning ushering us in. Thank God for prayer and all that he was able to take us into this morning. Oh, yes. Teach us. Seek first the kingdom of God. Good morning, Mary Wilson. God bless you, Williams. Christine Jackson. Good morning, Kai Kai. Sonia Wilson. Monica Monet. Deacon Emma Rad. Good morning. Good morning, Patricia Scott. You, with, you hanging with me? Cincinnati. Good morning, Sonia. Got to have it. Michelle Jim. Good morning, Karen Cruz. Lily Thomas. Don't you want it? Don't you know you need it? That's it right there. I just keep going back to that. <laughs> Brenda Ann Brown, I just keep going back to Deborah Sharp. I just keep going back to that. Hey, in the spirit. What, what, what? There, what? Yes, streams of life. Now gushing for Yes. Don't you want it? Do you know you need it? <laughs> oh, yes, I do. Hey. Teach us. Teach us. Hande. Hey, Shante. Do you want it? Do you know you need it? I gotta go back one more time, y'all. We 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 gotta get that that thirst, that pursuit. Do you know you want it? Do you know you need it? Oh God! Woo! Shout out to my Good morning, Dr. Donald McNuttentosh. Good morning, Valerie Thomas. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, Kai Kai, do you know? Do you know Linda Atlas? Yes, yes, yes. Good morning, Dr. Tawana Hunter, Stalwart, Sutton, the Bluesley. Hey, Sissy, Gloria, Jean, Vince Harris. Mary Wilson Williams, do, do we know it? Andy Craig. Rivers, streams of life. Hey, shut up. Yes, Lord. Now, good shame. Woo! Yes, yes, yes. Don't you want it? Do you know you need it? Do you know you need to be in this flow? Hallelujah. To enter in. Hey. There is. Come on, Sister Leola Rucker. Good morning, Sean. Good morning. 
Good morning. Good morning, Chris Chris. Elder Barbara Duncan. Good morning, Ellen Hughley. Good morning, Janet Rivers Richardson, Michelin Tucker. Good morning, my 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 own John Andrew Hart, Vanessa Robinson. Glory. Do you want it? I just gotta do it one more time. I'm sorry. Let's see if I can get it. Yes, yes. There is something about this. Reverend Dr. Noreen, good morning, good morning. Dina Moss Moulton. <laughs> Gloria said, I want it, and I know I need it. Some people want it, but they don't know they need it. Some people need it and don't know they want it. <laughs> Come on, teach us. Good morning, Pastor William Lamont, praying for that situation. You and your wife with your social security. Rebo Kofo Masia. Pray for open favor there. I tell him, Overseer Ryan. Good morning, Vandela. Good morning. Overseer. Get them in here. There are rivers. Yeah, speak in tongues, folks. Speak in tongues now. Good shing. Call it up. Call it up. Don't you want it? Yes, God. Do you know you need it? Yes, Lord. Good morning, LaShawn Renee Michael. Good morning, Audrey Jackson. Wendelin Foster. Good morning, Dr. Thea Borkins Wilson. Dr. Patricia James. Curtis Lee. Safe travel, Sherry Henderson. Kimberly Long. Oh, got the Veronica player, Pamela Spidey. Rip up, 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 Regina, you got my attention. <laughs> Listen to this. Regina says, thank you, Bishop, for your teachings. I have a praise report. Yes, there's a flow there. I still been going back and forth to court. Face in a 15-year prison sentence. But I've been going in the courtroom praying in the spirit. Wow. Under my breath. Sent to us yesterday, five years served instead of 15 years. He comes home. Three. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow, wow. Testimonies everywhere. Praying in the Spirit. You ain't got to pray loud. But when you pray in the Spirit, your Spirit prays. Hey! <laughs> what a testimony, Lady Vice. Veronica Blair, good morning. Yes, yes. Good morning. Yes, Eddie Chris. Yes. Pray in the spirit, Kai Kai. Yes, yes. Wow. Pat Kelly. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Elder Kathy. Good morning. Oh, Rabba Baba Baba. She can tell that I'm overseeing Lenita. Good morning, Dr. Jenkins. Leatrice Fuller Ellis. Tell Ford. Yes, yes. Mama Pearl, good morning. Baby, you all right, Mother. Whenever you show up, we bless. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> hey, Baba 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 Baba. Yay, come on. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabba, Baba, Baba, Shika, Tarabo, Oscar. Woo. Come on, come on, come on. Woo. If that is the key, but come on, y'all. Let's give God praise. Dr. Felicia, good morning. Rhonda Dooley, Juanita Campbell, let's go. Good morning, Chaplain. Catching a flight. Traveling mercies for you in Jesus' mighty name. 
pray in the spirit. Good morning, IG. Good morning. Good morning, all my Zoomers. Good morning. You know, God is doing some amazing things. God is doing some amazing things. And I believe that by the spirit of God, Regina, that's powerful. <laughs> you took me out with that one. Tracy Reed, good morning. Listen, you got to learn to do this. You got to learn to pray in the spirit. In the spirit. In the spirit. This a realm we live in. It's a dimension that God has opened up to us through the precious blood of Jesus Christ and the finished work which is shown to us through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Don't you want it? Hallelujah. Do you know you need it? Yes, God. Yes, God. Papa Nore, good morning. Good morning, Kimberly Reed. Good morning. Arababa Wendy Brown. Good morning, Dr. Miyashi. Good morning. Oh, God. Listen, when you know you want it and you know you need it, you are living the extraordinary life, the abundant life, living the amazing life. I can remember, you know, having having known Jesus Christ uh, in my youth, uh, but I knew that there was more. I knew that there was so much more, even in my youth. Mama Bertha, Mama B, good morning. Karen Jenkins Watts. And I knew there was so much more. And I would read my Bible and go to Sunday school because that was just practice in our homes. Come on, IG, spread it out. Let's get some people in there with us. We're so glad that you're here. And um, it was so amazing because uh i i kept searching i kept wanting more praise god you know, and I want that for all of you. I want there to be this insatiable thirst. I want each of you to have this, this, this amazing life, this amazing life that God has given us uh, by Christ and through his spirit. But I'm finding out that so many people don't have this thirst. I was young and I, I knew that I needed more. And I would I was exposed because I was a musician a musician and I would go into these churches and I would be able to see the move of God and I didn't understand it but I knew that it was real I knew it was authentic and I would go home and ask my daddy and talk to my mom about it and I'm telling you I just had this thirst Tanya Perkins I just had this thirst Alfred Van Yard Denise Curry Wanda Sue I just had it I just had it I knew there was more. I knew there was more. There are rivers, streams of life. Yes, Lord. I just can't get past it. I told her, Baba, Baba, shake it. Then I'm Mama Niosa. Don't you want it? <laughs> glory, glory, glory. I wanted it. I wanted it so. I wanted it so. I didn't I didn't know what it was that I wanted. But I wanted it. And that's what I want for each of us. I want all of you that are watching, maybe live or maybe you're watching the replay. 
or maybe you're days away, maybe you're weeks away, maybe you're a year away. But I want this to still be what we are saying to you, that there is a flow, Tyann, there is a flow. Mary Harrison, there's a flow. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I want you to want it. I want you to want it more than your necessary food. I want you to want it. I want you to know you need it. I want you to know that there is nothing better than the flow in the Holy Spirit. I'm not just talking about the tongues, the initial evidence. I'm talking about being filled until everything in you is changed until everything in you until every desire every appetite every habit until everything in your character has been adjusted that everything in your approach to life they feel that everything sheila has been reconfigured to be like jesus and the only thing that can do that is holy spirit he's the only person that can make us like god he's been given to us in the earth so that you and i can be like god in the earth oh my god don't you want it <laughs> do you know you need it in the courtroom in the classroom in the kitchen in the bedroom you need this you got to have it just just say god i want it i, I know i need it i got to have it i'm not gonna stop pursuing until i'm completely consumed Advantage the Kiva says, I spoke in tongues for the first time at the doctor's office during an intense, <laughs> during an intense and painful biopsy. The Holy Spirit helped me to calm down. I'm learning your grace that speaking in tongues can be applied in every area of life every day every day hallelujah hallelujah until we are completely consumed until we recognize holy spirit's presence in every area every day in every situation until your language reflects come on holy spirit until you're driving down the, the street I got turned around and I was driving. My GPS wasn't working. We lost the signal. I said, come on, Holy Spirit. I said, you flow with me. You tell me where to go. Hallelujah. I don't know where I am. But Holy Spirit, you know. You know everything. You know where I need to go. And you know I'm turned around right now. I'm discombobulated. But come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come, come, come now, come now. I was relying on the GPS, but I know you know you will lead me and guide me. So I tell you, I felt the impression in my spirit where to turn, how to get there, and baby, I looked up, and when I got where I was supposed to be going, my GPS came back in and said, you have arrived. I said, oh, Holy Spirit, you're so powerful. You're so powerful. You're so powerful. You're so omniscient. You're so knowing. You're so kind. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you never fail. You never fail. You never fail me. You've never failed me. Holy Spirit will never fail you. Holy Spirit will never fail you. Somebody put that in the chat. Holy Spirit will never fail me. Holy Spirit is your unfailing guide, your unfailing friend. Your paraclete, he walks with you. He's your comforter. 
And this is our greatest moment, our greatest season. Regina says, I was speaking in tongues yesterday before court. My grandbabies, listen to this. I love this. <laughs> My grandbabies, hallelujah. Rabbi Kase, Nana, I heard you singing. I said, I was speaking in tongues. They was watching, praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> And they said, I want to accept Jesus. Hallelujah. So now you're going to lead the babies to Jesus. Oh, my God. Reba, Baba, Holy Spirit will never fail me. Somebody write that down. Write that in the chat. Holy Spirit will never fail me. Will never fail you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Never fail me. You have never, ever failed me. Never failed me. I wanted to live near my children. And so I was close, but I wasn't in the mix. I need to be with my children. I got a little grandbaby. I needed to be in the part in the in the, in the growing up of his life. Glory to God. And I said, Holy Spirit, you find me a house. Ooh, shut up. Holy Spirit, you find me a house. You know exactly where I want to go. Tanya Jenkins, I said, Holy Spirit, you find me a house. I've been looking and looking, Rhonda. I've been looking and looking, Mandela. I've been praying and looking and, you know, going. I said, Holy Spirit, you find me a house. I got up one night just doing what I do when I get up in the middle of the night, praying in tongues, looking out the window. Oh God, oh God, get up out of my shape. Woo. And the Holy Spirit impressed me to go to my office. Go to my office and and to get on the computer. And I turned the computer on and it was it was it was already set for Zillow, I believe it was. So I, 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 I just clicked, put in my little information was already kind of there. And this house just book popped up, just book popped up. <laughs> Dr. Janine, good morning, apostle. Good morning, sister. Leonard, Pastor Leonard Staples. I said, Holy Spirit, this house popped up. Watch this. And I looked, I looked at the address, same street as my daughter, just a couple of, like a mile down. I went right on and I typed in, I want to see an agent. That morning, it's already about two, three in the morning. I got up, I did school of the Holy Spirit right after the broadcast around 9 a.m. The realtor called. And said, I see that you're looking at this house. I said, yes, I am. I would like to see this house. I've seen the inside. And she said, well, it just came on the market today, uh, yesterday. I said, well, I want to see it today. She said, let me call you back. Within an hour, she had booked me to see it that afternoon. She said, but I've also put two or three more on that we can see. Do you have time today? I said, sure. I said, but I want to see that house. We pulled up and because I know where my children live, I said, this is exactly the community. As a matter of fact, it's the same block as my oldest daughter, a few streets over. And my baby girl lives on this street down, down the way. And she said, are you serious? I said, yes, I couldn't wait to get in here. I walked in and Holy Spirit says, this is your house. I said, you found it. <laughs> she said, you think so? I said, no, I was talking to the Holy Spirit. I'm just praying in tongues. I walked in. I've had bigger houses. I've been other spaces, lived on oceans. But I didn't want that now. I wanted to be in the middle of my children. I wanted to help with my grandson. I wanted to be a vibrant part 
of my adult children's life. I didn't want to be forsaken. And I didn't want them to have to come a long way to see me and me have to come a long way to see them. I went upstairs, saw everything, and there was a photographer taking pictures because the realtor was doing whatever that she was doing. And I said, this is my house. And she said, well, I want to show you two more. I said, okay. So we got in and we were driving. I got to the first house. It was crap. I said, this is not my house. She took me to the second one. She said, there's another. I said, nope, it's not the wrong community. Can we go back? She said, you want to go back? I said, I want to go back. We walked back in. We came back in. I said, I want to put an offer on this house. Do you know that the Holy Ghost can show you, can find you a house? Holy Spirit, find me a house. And Holy Spirit, <laughs> with the same day, and the house had been on and off the market. They had used it, I guess, this rental property. It was just sitting here with family property. I put an offer on the house within the day. It went on the day before. The next day, I put an offer, and here I am. Now, what am I trying to say to you? The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets us free from anxiety and worry and pressure and stress because those things are sin and death. I want you to look at that for me for just a moment. In Romans chapter, now I want you to see this. I said, Holy Spirit, you find me a house. Holy Spirit, you find me. I just said it one day, Holy Spirit, find me a house. Everything that I do in my life, I engage Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Because I want to live under the law of the Spirit. I want to live in the realm of the law of the Spirit. <laughs> there you go, Kimberly. You're getting it now. You're getting it. Look what she said. She said, Holy Spirit, no, no, no. Not will you find me a house. Holy Spirit, you got to become intentional. Holy Spirit, help my daughter, Damika, get finished with her senior year. Holy Spirit, move on my workers' compensation case. Holy Spirit, bring it to a close with a godly outcome. This is how we must talk, folks. This is how we must live. Bishop Stephen Prasad, my Indian bishop, good morning. Go tell an Indian, listen to me. So the law of the spirit, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit, Romans 8 and 2, of life in Christ sets us free from the law of sin and death. Here's what it says in the New Living Translation, Romans 8 in your paper Bible. It says, and because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. And we always think that sin is gambling and smoking and lying and all of that. All of that. But what about anxiety? What about mental collapsing? What about being overwhelmed and living in stress? See, you're either going to operate in the law of the spirit or you're going to operate in the law of sin and death. And what I've discovered, hallelujah, <laughs> is that the law of the spirit is a much better law to live in. Thank you, Wendy, I was waiting. With the arrival of Jesus, the Messiah, the faithful dilemma is resolved. Those who enter into Christ being here for us no longer live under a continuous low-lying black cloud. A new power is in operation. The spirit of life in Christ 
like a strong wind has magnificently cleared the air, freeing you from a faded lifetime of brutal tyranny at the hands of sin and death. Come on, message. <laughs> Whoa, good God Almighty. The law of the spirit. The law of the spirit, like a strong wind, has magnificently cleared the air. Look at that. Freeing me from a faded lifetime of brutal tyranny at the hands of sin and death. Do y'all hear that? Wow. <laughs> wow. See, you're not operating in the law of the spirit when you're operating in fear. When you're operating and being overwhelmed, when you're operating in your emotions, when you're operating and you're giving that, that pushback and you, you're showing out that, that, that clap back, that's not the law of the spirit. That's the law of sin and death. <laughs> Woo, Rabbi Kashkataba. You're living under a dark cloud. Some of you are living under a dark cloud of family and generational bondages. You're living under a dark cloud of predispositions, Kathy Rudolph. And, and, and you're, you're living magnificently. Listen, you're living under a dark cloud of poverty and lack you're living under a dark cloud of confusion regret guilt shame heartache heartbreak you're living under a dark cloud good morning stephanie alice holmes good morning sissy good morning uh sister pixley jonathan davis listen to me pastor listen we've got to teach the people how to live in the law of the spirit the law of the spirit sets us free from the tyranny of sin and death, fear, poverty, lack, anger, guilt, offense. All of those things are, are not in the law of the spirit. And when you get out from under the tyranny of sin and death, the law of sin and death. Some of you are conditioned to live under the law of sin and death. You think life got to be hard. <laughs> Good morning, my flow. You think that life got to be hard. You think that, listen, I, let me tell you something. I, I was just having this conversation. I'm so sick and tired of struggling marriages. That, I, I know, listen, hear me good. I know that people differ. I know that people have different opinions, different backgrounds, but all of this praying you got to do to stay married, all of this stuff that we have made normal in marriage, folks, I'm telling you, it is the law of sin and death. Marriage, I do not believe. Some of us that are pastors and leaders, apostles and prophets of churches and all of the things, I don't believe it's supposed to be so stressful that it drives you to drinking, to pastor the Lord's people. No, no, but you're not doing it in the law of the spirit. I don't believe that living well and having what you need, prosperity, I'm sick of the struggling life that some of the saints are living and you're trying to make it appear as if God ordained it that way. No, you're not living by the law of the spirit. Whoa, Shataba. I don't believe it. You're not going to convince me. We got some stuff wrong, folks. We got some stuff wrong. There's no way I'm sick of struggling marriages. I'm sick of, you always got to pray about it. And, and, and we not know that that marriage needs to come under the law of the spirit because the law of the spirit sets us free from the tyranny. Come on, somebody. I'm sick of it, Reverend Tony Lee. I'm sick of us convincing, trying to convince people that that's the way marriage is supposed to be. No, 
No and no. We're not living with the tyranny of always being angry, always being broke, always not having what you need. Always don't know. You're not going to convince me that that's what we are supposed to expect. No joy, no thrill, no fun. No. No, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of struggling marriages. I'm sick of you trying to convince us that that's the way God wanted. Well, you know, it's tough. I'm sick of hearing that story. I do not believe that should be our testimony. I do not believe that we're supposed to always be praying about our marriage. Pray for my marriage. Pray for this. Pray. I don't believe it. The law of the spirit. Wendy, put that scripture back up for me, please, from the message. The law of the spirit. I don't believe it. Somebody in that marriage is not functioning under the right law. I'm sick of you trying to convince us that that's the way God intended marriage to be. I'm sick of us always got, you know, we just going through. We just go, why? Why you just went through? Never coming out. Never coming out. Put that up for me, please. Look here. The spirit of life in Christ. Let's go back. Those who enter into Christ being here for us no longer have to live under a continuous low-lying black cloud. I'm sick of the saints. Well, you know, I just, you know, this is, this is, this is, this is what I, you know, I struggle with this. I struggle with that. You know, I've been struggling with this all my life. You know, just pray for me that today I don't give in to it. Uh, just pray for me that, you know, I, you know, God will break this thing off of my life. You know, I, I got, I've been like this since I was a child, you know, and so I'm struggling with this and, you know, no, you like it. You like it. You ain't got to struggle. You like it and you like it enough that you try to use the excuse that you don't have any options. No, look what it says. Those who enter into Christ being here for us no longer have to live under a continuous low-lying black cloud. Yes, my bishop, good morning, uh, your grace. Oh my God, you don't have to do that. Uh, bishop Wilson McCrary, God bless you, baby. Oh my God, <laughs> a prime example, not having to live under a continuous low-lying black cloud. I'm sick of the saints always struggling, struggling with a habit, struggling with an attitude, struggling with this, struggling with money, struggling with your mom, struggling with your dad, struggling with your relationship, struggling with your boss, struggling with your children. What is the joy of your salvation? No, you're not living under the right law. And we have made it as if that's acceptable. Look what it says. It says a new power is in operation. Somebody write that down. A new power is in operation. A new power is in operation. Well, you know, my, my folks struggle with this and, you know, and I know you like it. You like struggle. Struggle is your norm. Dysfunction is your norm. You have developed a propensity for sin and pleasing your flesh. It's not that you have to struggle. No, a new power is in operation. Come on here, Pastor William Lamont. You're still climbing up the rough side of the mountain. I didn't know what to do. My husband died. My wife, you know, went on and no, you are on the wrong law. That's the law of sin and death. That's the law of sin and death. Somebody put in the chat, a new power is in operation. As long as Jesus was in the earth, all of those, that dilemma, that anxiety, all of that because of the law of sin and death that hovered over 
the world that the dispensation, the dispensation, the dispensation of, of, of the law was in operation. But when Jesus died and he was ascended and he went up, he sent back a new power. We're under new management. He sent back a new power. Hey, bye, bye, bye. He sent back a new power. I don't believe that you got to struggle in nothing when this power, this law is in operation. The spirit of life in Christ, like a strong wind, has magnificently cleared the air. Some of you right now, the spirit of God is shifting and changing the paradigm of your thinking and your expectation of struggle is being broken. This man, I'm just, well, you know, we love each other, but we can't get along. What the, what, 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 what? No, no, no. I'm praying and you in one room and I'm in another room and you, you mad and I'm hurt. And we get up in the morning, the eggs is nasty. The bacon is bitter, burn up. No, no. And we stay in it with that toxicity, thinking, praying. No, listen to me. Holy Spirit has cleared the air and has freed you from a faded lifetime of brutal tyranny at the hand of sin and death. God Almighty. We are under a new management folk. It's a new, it's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> Whoa, glory to God. Everything, everything is a struggle. I want you to hear me. It's not a struggle to stop lying. It's not a struggle to stop enjoying and, and being intoxicated. It's not a struggle to break that spirit. It's not a struggle. That struggle is gone. The law of the spirit of life in Christ sets us free. There's a new sheriff in town. There's a new power that's available. We get so offended. We get so angry. We get so hurt because that law of sin and death is constantly trying to take you out of the law of the spirit. That's why you got to hate sin. You got to come into another space. You got that struggling demon. That I want to break that spirit today in the name of Jesus. Now, do you really think that in this dispensation of the spirit that you can be totally used of God and you're constantly struggling? No. In the last days, I'm pouring out my spirit. Why? Not just so you can enjoy life, but so I can use you so that God can consume your life and God can use you, whether it's in the marketplace, in the ministry, in your relationships, in education, in government, so God can use you. You can't get used and you're always in a struggle because you are too distracted. You can't be used when you are, are always fighting for air. You can't breathe. Oh my God. <laughs> and some of you are addicted to looking at the bad of everything. You know, some of you are addicted to always wanting to present the negative. Some of us are addicted, some of the saints, and I understand, I get social justice. I get equity. I get all of those things. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets me free. So I need to be free mentally. I need to be free emotionally. I need to be free because if I'm not free, then I'm not useful. I'm not profitable to the Lord. Are you hearing me? Watch this. Watch this. I want you to hear this. You have victory over the sinful nature. You've got to hate sin. One of the first laws of the spirit is that you've got to hate sin. 
You have got to hate the struggle. You got to hate it. If you don't hate it, you ain't going to never come out of it. If you don't hate it, you're never going to admit that you can come out of it. Am I talking to anybody? Who am I talking to? You have got to hate sin. You got to hate it with everything. You got to hate anxiety. You got to hate fear. You got to hate guilt. You got to hate shame. You got to hate being angry. You got to hate holding a grudge. You got to hate living in grief. You got to hate this stuff. Ooh, who am I talking to? Good God of mine. If I'm talking to you, say me, me, me. You got to hate it. I hate sin. I hate the... I hate the smell of it. I hate the symptoms of it. And when I say I hate sin, I'm not just talking about, oh, you know, what we think of more immorality and what, no, anger, unforgiveness, always being offended, always got to clap back, talking too much, living pitiful. I'm sick of the pitiful saints. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of you. Pitiful. That's a spirit that comes from the law of sin and death. I hate that spirit. Well, you know, how long, how long your loved one been dead? 20 years. What? You ain't talking about last week? No. You're not talking about last month? No. Mm -mm. And you still living like this? No, you under the law of sin and death. You are living under the law of sin and death. You are living so low. You are living in anger. You're living in regret. You're living in pity. You're living in self-sabotaging behavior. You're living in dysfunction. You're living in a state of mental anxiety and distress. And then you want to convince the world that Christ is the way you'll never be able to do that because you don't look like you're doing well. I just can't forgive him. Then what are you talking about? How are you going to convince somebody else that Christ has forgiven them and you're living in unforgiveness? See, we, we all of this, these self-sabotaging habits that, that you have been made free from. I'm not, I'm not talking about uh, the big stuff that we always, the, the top five, but just having pity parties. Do you know how grievous that is to the Holy Spirit? Do you know how grievous poverty is to the Holy Spirit? Do you know how grievous that stinky attitude is to the Holy Spirit? Do you know that your controlling ways and fearful ways and I gotta have control, I, I got, do you know that your laziness is an offense to the Holy Ghost? Do you understand that God has given us the law of the spirit so that we can be free? Do you realize that, that your insecurity is an offense of the Holy Spirit. Do you realize, do you realize, do you realize that your isolation is, 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 is an offense to the Holy Spirit? I mean, I just don't like people. Do you realize that that is offensive? That is grievous to the Holy Spirit. That the ways in which you have picked up that all of this nasty attitude and this persnippity uh, way that you handle people is grievous to the Holy Spirit. You may not have ever been in a casino. You may not look at porn. You may not, you may not do it, but you don't treat people well. Do you realize that depression grieves the Holy Spirit? Do you realize that reliving your trauma over and over and over again is grievous to the Holy Spirit. Do you realize that? Oh my God. And there is nothing in the Bible that says that we uh, should not 
uh, uh, grieve Jesus or we should not grieve the Father. But the Bible is clear. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. Do you realize that overeating? Look here. Come on here. <laughs> when the same God delivers you from gluttony, listen to this. I know this is true. God spoke this to me years ago. He said, listen, a church member uh, very much overweight, out of control with the eating out on the street witnessing and the homeless man said when the same God you're pushing at me delivers you from overeating then I'll have to I'll hear what you say I know you're right I know you're right the raggedest car in town with a bumper sticker hump if you love if you love Jesus really all of these things we must clean up because the next wave of Holy Spirit is coming to the earth and God is going to need people who are free from the struggle, free from the struggle, free. You have grieved a Holy Spirit. Your self-sabotaging, dysfunctional way of living grieves the Holy Spirit. You have told your story about childhood a thousand times. You have told your story about the dysfunction of your coming up a million times. Come on, folks. You don't have another testimony? God ain't did nothing for you since you was three. We're grieving the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Watch this. And I know we don't think that this could possibly be us. But when God says, I will pour out my spirit in the last days, I believe him. And I believe we're in these last days. I believe that we're in it right now. You don't, y'all don't want to move on. You want to stay in that. You want to be mad. You want to be mad. You want to be depressed. You want somebody to pity you. You want to feel sorry for yourself. I'm breaking that spirit now in the name of Jesus. I'm coming against that now by the power of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. In the name of Jesus, right now, breakthrough, 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 breakthrough that anger, breakthrough that resentment, breakthrough that depression, Break through that anxiety. Break through that guilt. Break through that shame. Break through. Break through. Break through that unforgiveness. Break through now in the name of Jesus. Some of you are always on edge. You just, you can get them told. That's a clap back. That's a spirit. That's a spirit of insecurity. Your clap back. You always got something for somebody. I've got something for. That is a sign of your insecurity. One of the things that I was reading in the scripture, I heard Bishop Jackson read it when they were stoning Stephen. And Stephen said some powerful things. Stephen said some powerful, powerful things right before they stoned him. He said, y'all have always fought the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 51 of Acts chapter number seven. He said, you stubborn people, you are heathens at heart and deaf to the truth must you forever resist holy spirit as your ancestors have done Ooh. 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 name one prophet your ancestors didn't persecute they even killed the ones who predicted the coming of the righteous one the messiah whom you betrayed and murdered Notice what it says. Must you forever resist the Holy Spirit? You have always.
ways. This is what one translation says. You have always, you have always resisted the Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes, Overseer Ryan. Many are monetizing their pain. Some have created conferences, workshops, rooms full of folk that come back every year to relive their pain. To re-traumatize themselves. Stephen said, will you always resist Holy Spirit? Your ancestors, your ancestors always fought the Holy Ghost. Will you too resist Holy Spirit? It's boy getting ready to die. He said, I'm giving it all to you. Y'all have always been mean to the Holy Spirit. You've always been, you've always rejected. And this is all God is going to give us in the last days. You're going to kill me. You're going to, you know why you're stoning me? You're stoning me because I healed the sick. You're stoning me because I raised the dead. You're stoning me because I'm a man full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. And you're stoning me for that. Will you too resist the Holy Spirit? How long will you fight what Holy Spirit wants to do in your life? You don't need another prayer. You don't need another laying on of hands. You don't need another drop of oil on your forehead. You don't need another fast. You don't need another consecration. You just need to say goodbye to the law of sin and death. Esha, Rebo Koshkata. Oh God, listen here. I want to take communion with you today. And the reason that I want to do that today more than ever is that I want to seal this word in your heart. This is the body of the Lord Jesus that is broken for us. And when we eat it, we eat it in remembrance of him. I don't eat it to stay mean, mad, nasty. I eat it in remembrance of him to be free. And the cup is that of a new covenant. I'm under new management. I don't have to live under the overwhelming power of darkness that has prevailed in my family. Not another minute. Dr. Melinda Watts, not another day. I drink it in remembrance of Jesus Christ and the new covenant, which is a covenant of the spirit. I drink it knowing that I am free from the law, sin, sickness, and death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, my God. We got to live under this. And this is the precursor to the imminent return of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you now, God is looking for some people that he can use. God is looking for the people that he is going to use in this last day. Listen, you know what? We've been away and I'm going to ask you to sow your tuition today. I'm going to ask you to sow your tuition today of $5. Your $5 seed. You can do Zale which is my email, Vaughn at gmail.com. You can do cash app, dollar sign, Corletta Vaughn. You can go to our website at www.gotellit.org. Hit that donate button. You can mail it like mother and some of you do so sweetly. 1745 East Grand Boulevard. 1745 East Grand Boulevard, Detroit, Michigan. Go now, put your, your $5 tuition. Every five days, we sow a seed of $5. And that's a tuition amount. Thank you, Dr. Skillman. And once you've sown it, could you put, put, put it in there? Done, seed done. Thank you, Dr. Aqua. Thank you, Glenda. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Glennis. Hallelujah. Put your seat. The $5 tuition. Where are you going to get 
a level of pneumatology like you're receiving every day for $5. It's your, it's your tuition. Thank you, Dr. Noreen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, everything that has us bound, whether it's food, family, whether it's famine, whatever it is, the law of the spirit, thank you, Overseer Lanita, has set us free from the law. I will not, if I'm not going to kill myself with immorality, I'm not going to kill myself with food. And God spoke to me one day, listen, I got to tell you how this. I was sitting on the couch. I was close to 300 pounds. I was 260 pounds. I'm 5'2". I was rounded. Oh, Lord. Lord, have mercy. And I remember the Holy Spirit spoke to me so clear. And I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe I'm talking to nobody. But I remember sitting on the couch and we were doing some things, Vita, and I was getting the kids to children ready. And thank you, Dr. John Davis. Absolutely, sir. Thank you, Pastor Middleton. Thank you. And the Spirit of God spoke to me. Thank you, Reverend Tony Lee. Thank you for your seed. He said, the way you allow me to use you, this is how God spoke to me. I just come from great revivals, great meetings. And Holy Spirit said this to me, but you're too fat. I sat up and instantly I began to weep. I began to weep. I said, what? You care about that? I said, you're too fat. I was almost 300 pounds. I think I was in a 22 and a half, 24. And the Holy Spirit said to me, you're too fat. I remember calling my sister and I, I was just crying. I was just saying, oh God. I said, I got to repent. This isn't a weight problem. This isn't a diet issue. My weakness, my weakness. This is a witness issue. I'm preaching I'm preaching the hell out of hell. I'm preaching the hell out of folks. People getting slain. People getting healed. People getting saved. And the Holy Ghost said to me, but you're too fat. And it will lead to disease. I said, God, forgive me. And every day I make a decision. Every day. You know what it is that plays in your life. You know what it is. And the Holy Spirit is here to free us from that law of sin, sickness, and the, oh God, you dress it up. Holy Spirit said, you're too fat. What is Holy Spirit saying to you? Where is the law of sin and death? in operation. Stephanie, you remember, I never will forget. I never will forget it. And whatever it is, every day, I have to hear what the Spirit is saying. No, don't eat that. That's enough. Don't do that. It's a day-to-day -day making a decision. I will never be a 18, a 16 again. I'll never be a 20 again. I'll never be a 22. I'll never be a 24. I'll, I'll never do it. Listen to me carefully. The law of the spirit has made us free from the tyranny of sin and death. I got to go. Put your seed in the ground. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all. Listen, get your Bibles and read it because I'm telling you, we're going to come back and we're going to get into this law of the spirit. Living by the law of the spirit will free your finances. It'll free, it'll free you. It'll free you. It'll free you mentally. It'll free you, folks. It'll free you from that snapback in the spirit you got. It'll free you from it. Shatobo. <laughs> 
They have said, Holy Spirit said, spit that food out the other day. And I did, honest to God. Hey, listen, I love y'all. I got to get out of here. <laughs> Share this on your pages, my God, and keep me in your prayers. Join us in the cathedral, at the cathedral. If you are in the Detroit area or live, you can go to our page, Holy Ghost Cathedral of Detroit. We will be there on Sunday. We're teaching a new series called Contagious Christianity. We'd love to have you as a bride. If not, join us right back here at School of the Holy Spirit. I got to get out of here.